Hello. Uh, thanks to Tomas Diaz, the, the Fab Cities team, for uh, bringing me here from the long journey from Barcelona, uh, where I'm based at the moment, waiting for my presentation to show up. Um, uh, while I'm waiting, I guess I'll tell you, in Barcelona, there's over 50 that we know of shared mobility service operators. So we're talking taxis, uh, bike shares, car shares, peer-to-peer, uh, -peer, bike sharing networks, um, park parking sharing spaces. We even have boat sharing in, in Barcelona. And then, of course, we have lots of public transit services. So today, what we have is a very, mobil uh, a very fragmented mobility marketplace. And we believe if we want to actually achieve what I talked about before, which is reduce dependence on uh, personal vehicles for mobility within cities, then we have to provide a viable, seamless experience that is an alternative that is enabling, that is open source, and connects end users to any mobility service that they want, public or private, even integrated mobility solutions that are public and private together. And that's what we're working on at IOMOB. So some of you may, have been, may be familiar with this concept called mobility as a service. It really emerged in Europe as this idea of integrating public and private mobility services. The very first stage was like a single operator saying you could have, instead of owning a car, you could, for example, with Toyota, you could pay a monthly service and have access to any vehicle in their fleet. For one week, you use a Prius, another week, you use a SUV to go on a trip with your family, whatever that is. So that was step one in the Moss evolution. Step two was single provider multimodal. And this is out very common in cities where you have public transit card that gives you access to any mobility service from the public transit authority with a card that you either pay as you go or you actually can pay a monthly service fee and actually have unlimited access to any mobility service from the public transit authority. Step three, which is the big one in Europe right now and started with WIM out of Helsinki, is this idea of a closed network with closed software and a, a negotiated group of public and private mobility operators who agree to be packaged in for pay-as-you-go or monthly service plans. So, for example, in Helsinki, I think they have eight between the public transit authority, one or two, uh, one taxi uh, company, and then a few other mobility services like one bike share service. Step four, what we call Internet of Mobility, and I believe really resonates with the FAB community, which, of course, I'm a big fan of, um, is uh, what if we did all this with open source and blockchain technology and instead of having proprietary software and a closed network of the biggest providers, what if we create an open platform where any mobility service provider, even a single taxi driver who says, you know what, I'm tired of my taxi company charging me 200 euros a week to have a membership in their plan. Why don't I just, I have my own license. Why don't I just operate my own vehicle? When you have a decentralized open mobility ecosystem, when that taxi driver is closest to me, when I need a taxi to go somewhere, I will see him or her. It doesn't matter if he's part of a 3,000 car fleet or by himself. It's irrelevant to me. I only want the one closest to me. That's license. So that's just one example use case. So we're building this in Barcelona, though actually we've had more traction in Singapore, and so our first full pilot uh, uh, release of IOMOB is our project is called IOMOB Internet of Mobility. We'll actually be in Singapore, but we're working on other cities too. What you see is basically what we can enable again is this universal open access to any public or private mobility service such that you could go from any point to any point combining any public and private mobility service. You can route, book, and pay for that whole combination, that whole journey in an open protocol on an open network. And by the way, it's through fiat. So we're not assuming the end user is going to actually use um, crypto. They don't have to use crypto. They can just pay the way they always do. And finally, just to wrap up, I have a minute left, and this is my last slide. I want to talk just briefly. So I'm starting to introduce to you this idea of how blockchain could enable a new type of smart city, a very human-centric, decentralized smart city. And we believe blockchain has massive potential across all types of smart city initiatives. And that's why we helped create this thing called the Blockchain Cities Alliance, of which the Fab Cities Group is one of the founding members. And the Blockchain Cities Alliance aims to get group projects like mine, Fab Cities, and many other stakeholders, researchers. We have two universities right now. 
to come together as a coalition and say what use cases would be really important and interesting in the city space, like the one I'm presenting in mobility, and how can we actually uh, promote the adoption of shared standards, of uh, diffusion of information across networks, of even collaborative projects across cities or networks of cities like the Fab Cities Network. So if any of you in here are interested in that, please do let us know. I do have on my last slide uh, some ways to contact me if you'd like. Thank you very much.